back of that big cat. Yeah. Kind of like, and then setting back behind the cat behind that guy. Yeah. That doesn't work. So my brother just left, and we are preparing for the next storm coming from northeast inside here in Nassau. We're gonna wait that out until we move. So anyway, sad to see him go. And then uh, we don't know when we see each other next, so that's the saddest part. But now we're gonna drop anchor and kind of exhale a little bit, clean up and get everything ready. I'm Therese and this is Cody. After meeting in Fiji, we decided to continue living our lives together. With a love for the ocean, we upgraded and combined our shelters to a 40-foot sailboat and started exploring our options. While working, fighting, loving each other and dreaming, we also managed to make a human. This is Millie Breeze, our little girl we hope to teach that life is simple if you let it. Subscribe and join us with the world at our keel. Sail. Get a cruise? Start a cruising season? <laughs> yeah, you excited? The storms are all past, so we're gonna go north. Have you looked up how far we're going? Do you look at any charts? Do you know where the wind's gonna be? Oh, you want me to? Alright. Let's get ready. wind right now we're expecting to do an overnight with the wind slowly increasing and we went out of the bay and it is a uh, straight on a nose kind of wind right now so <laughs> but we're making the best of it we only have a small window to go north we're gonna go to the Abacos and I'm uh, very excited about that uh, so well hopefully we get to sail here in a bit uh, Cody's already got the fishing poles out. We had a fish. Cody is a little upset because we got a tuna or something that like didn't hook onto his best plug and he seems to think that is an impossible task a for a tuna. On a cedar plug. I've never <laughs> seen one hit a cedar plug and not hook. Uh, and he saw him try to bite it too. So it's really funny. But um, we just started so hopefully we catch a fish a little closer to Anchorage and closer to, um, I guess, sunrise tomorrow morning. I feel like we make all the videos recently have been made while we're motoring. Yeah, and I also feel like you should by now know how to make a burrito. I'm trying to get all the chicken in the He doesn't rack. know this, and it's very interesting to me. He never closes the bottom and ends up just spilling things, and then he just, like, mushes it together. <laughs> Also, we're venturing into cloth diapers, so these are Millie's uh, diapers hanging to dry here on the road. <laughs> you wait. Uh, yeah, wind's clocking. You might be able to see them.
alive in the night to realize I'm in the middle of the time of my life. I'm never so packed for the stack, never lied on the back, got a bag from the way that I write it. Queen with the Tyson, do that ass survive through an 80 to the house, then I hit it to the sky, change haters on a tirade. Talking to the grip in the face, be still, let that hit stuff. <laughs> So what happened now is that our sushi dinner with our cruising buddies and neighbors um, ended up with a storm warning. Uh, so now we are currently sitting, standing by, doing everything we can on each boat to just get ourselves ready. We don't really know um, what's coming. It seems to be uh, a lot of strong winds in Florida, up to Georgia right now, so I'm trying to get into some buoy checking. There we go. Oh boy. So what we've been told so far, there's been f around 50 knot gust, I guess. We just got a report like a couple minutes ago, maybe 30 minutes ago. We were all able to just kind of secure everything. But uh, it does look like it's pretty nasty. The holding in this area isn't really the best, but Worst case scenario, we have a long ways to go before we hit anything, at least. It's the calm before the storm right now. I hate these ones where you get the predictions last minute so you're not prepared at all. It kind of catches you off guard. Ah. <laughs> So we read about a little dinghy adventure over here through mangroves. It's supposed to be really, really cool. So we are dressing up in the windy weather that we have to uh, join our buddies over on sailing vessel Alyssa over here. And then we're gonna go to a dinghy ride and Millie is in Cal East. <laughs> yep.
look at these. some fish so supposedly all roads lead to Rome right Millie Actually here, it seems like all roads lead to Snake Key. Snake Key is one of the first really founded cities in the Abaco. It was an old logging town that was started in 1950s by a company named Owen, Illinois. They built all these logging roads, kind of like the one we're on now. So yeah, we're gonna go and explore. There was an old ferry that was first brought here um, called the Fulton out of New York. It was decommissioned in 1947, uh, sent to the scrapyard and then rebuilt and brought back in 1950s, drove across the Gulf Stream and landed over here where we're going to head to. Um, and a guy named Dave Ralph. Uh, was hired by the company, came over, uh, was kind of the guy that oversaw most of the production of the company. Uh, they were a huge logging company, uh, mainly logging the pine trees, kind of like what you see here, and pulp wood, which I'm not really sure what that is, but uh, it was sent back to, it was sent from here, this was like the main headquarters where they would live on the, that ferry, or that uh, old steamboat is what it really was. It had their little general store, soda machines, lunch in places. Uh, the first couple people lived on there. Then they brought over a couple railway cars, which they also lived on as well. Then they had some uh, prefab houses that they put up over here. I guess somewhere we'll see. Maybe this was a base to one of them. So yeah, the guy, uh, Dave Ralph, lived over here, oversaw the company. They logged over here throughout the late 50s, early 60s, up to about 1967, when they uh, ended up, uh, the kind of logged themselves out of the area yet again, just like they did in the 1920s, and um, tried to make some money off of the areas that they had already logged kind of a bit more inland, I guess. They turned to sugarcane for their next production, see if they could make some coin. I think that lasted for only a few years when they realized the production wasn't as good as what they had predicted. Um, and so that ended up shutting down as well. Then everyone kind of moved out of the area. Dave Ralph ended up marrying a girl that he had met over here um, in 1961. They got together, worked through the end of that Owens, Illinois company's production and moved over to 
uh, Hopetown and started the marina, I guess, that was over there. But uh, this now looks like a pretty rundown place. All around this area, there seems to be a, uh, there's just a chair laying down. But they've cut out and quarried up this rock here. And uh, it's all has this, um, like a retaining wall with rebar, nice rebar actually. And everything keeping this retaining wall. And I guess this is kind of where they would park their, uh, their boats and everything to pick up all the wood. Uh, and then lumber and send it back to Jacksonville where they would, I guess their major production was to turn it into cardboard. But yeah, we'll go check it out, see if we can find a couple old artifacts or something. Right, Millie? We got our hiking shoes on? Yeah? This looks like another foundation to maybe one of those prefab houses they were talking about. But it's a pretty cool place. So all these logging roads that kind of run back in here all run to Snake Key. They all kind of come back to this, this area, which is cool. And uh, some of the founders of this, these places, I think it was the guy before him, I can't remember his name, but they ended up uh, building Freeport uh, out of some of the money and they built the first airport over in Marsh Harbor and kind of seems like they kind of started this whole place of the Abaco before it was um, really even developed. Super cool history. We'll go see what we can find around the area. I'm not sure if that's from the 1950s. It's definitely old. There's a lot of scrap metal around. Nylon. Oh, I can't tell. Super Miller. finding all these dead ends. I don't know guys, if you guys can tell, I'm guessing they probably tore up quite a bit of mangroves just to get back in here. Looks like, uh, and this place was struck by Dorian uh, two years ago, two or three years ago now. So they definitely have, I don't know if all this trash is something that's just been blown up. It looks like it. I'm curious on where this all leads. Kind of cool, it's like walking back in time though. Like nobody's out here, nobody lives out here. There's nothing here except an old abandoned rundown, I would say wharf. It looks like this is definitely a big fishing area, or was. Or it actually still is, because some of these conquer. Not that old actually. It looks like an old maybe boat ramp that they've cut out of here. walk for hours on this thing. She is out for sure. This is kind of cool. 1961. I don't really know what this, maybe an old lamp? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Clay of some sort, but that's cool. 1961. spent a couple of days here waiting out the storm at Snake Key and um, Cody and Millie went exploring today they came back and we are now going to move over I think to Elbow Key or somewhere close to Hopetown. We've never been here before and we're trying to you know navigate through and find the best yeah. anchorages and not miss anything huh? Yeah. So we're ready to pick up anchor. It's no wind but it's at least calm. It's been northerly. It was basically like 
how many degrees Fahrenheit? Like 14 degrees Celsius this morning at 6 a.m. outside, and that is freezing. We've been in sweaters and pants, and oh. she, Millie's been in boots, like literal, you know, thick. Yeah, it's freezing outside duvet. as our daughter's in a crop top. <laughs> and there's wind. She's lying. There is wind. There is wind? That way. Oh, all right. Right well, where we're going. We're going that way, so that doesn't really work. It's gonna be well, a lot of tax, Millie. Get ready. <laughs> Either way. Stay tuned. <laughs>